In this video on Skull and Bones, I'm gonna show you how to get a stronger ship and increase your ship rank really fast. You can see right now, I'm using a ship rank of number 10. This is like the level of ship that you'll see on players as you sail around them in the world. Thanks to Ubisoft for providing me with access to this game. Now you don't necessarily have to get a different ship to become stronger and increase your ship rank. Ship rank relies on many different things. There are three elements that make up the rank of your ship. The first one is the ship itself. If I go ahead and I go to the ship right over here and I speak to them and I go craft new items, you can see all the ships over here. They start at number one, there's two at two, there's a couple at three, and then there's a bunch of fives. These are all the ships that are available in the game right now, at least. Later on in this video, I'm gonna talk about which order to get them in for the best benefits and like which ones are great. But you'll see that the ones right at the end here are only rank five. So how am I rank 10 on a rank five ship? For reference, I'm using the Brigantine, the Hellbreaker one over here. So having the ship gives you an instant rank of five. And to increase that rank further, you're gonna go ahead and add weapons, armor, and furniture. So if I go to a blacksmith over here and I go craft new items, you can see here, here are all the weapons, right? Now, when you see these red down arrows, this is because they are weaker than what you currently have. And the way you measure the strength is by actually looking at this icon over here on the screen, you can see it says 38, right? If you get a number that's higher than what you currently have equipped, for example, if I go to this one, which is 105, you see it has a green arrow upwards. This one, that 105 is the, the extra levels that it adds to your ship's ranking. And this is the same for every single weapon that you can get on your ship. Now, not only that, you actually have armor as well. Armor also does affect the level on your ship. For example, you can see this armor over here has 340, the quality of it. Its actual armor is 980, so don't get confused with looking at the 340 thinking that's the armor you're getting. It also has specific damage mitigation. So if you're fighting specific enemies that have flooding or piercing, this is great armor to use against them. This 340 is actually the level that is gonna add to your rank. And lastly, we have furniture, which we go to the carpenter for. And if we go ahead and craft new items at the furniture, you'll see if we go to the offensive furniture, there's actually the epic major ones over here. You can always add only one of the purple ones, the major furniture. You can only have one of these on your ship. You'll see this does add like a small increase. It adds like 50. It's nothing crazy, but it's, it's something that does increase your rank slightly. And then the other furniture types here are just, you know, minor furniture. They add about 30 and you can equip about like, at least on my ship, I can equip four of these and one major one. Now you can find these on dens in the game. The dens much like St. Anne, which is pretty much right over here. So on, on the den, you're going to be looking for the carpenter for the furniture, the shipwright for the ships and the blacksmith for your weapons and armor. Let me go show you how it directly affects the level of your ship. So the way you edit your ship is by going to the dock where you where you embark. If I go ahead and I embark from here and I go manage ship, I can go ahead and change the weapons. And now you'll see at the bottom right, there is a ranking system of my current rank and how far I am from the next one, right? So for example, I have this tearing culverin over here equipped on the bow of my ship. If I go ahead and I unselect this, you'll see that suddenly my rank is dropping down to a nine because that green section was being added just because I have this cannon on. Like I can have a worse cannon on there and I can like maybe equip, um, where's a bad cannon? <laughs> like, do I have bad cannons? I can equip something like this and you can see the green only goes up slightly. Like, you know, it doesn't go up as much as this. That's the difference between, you know, the that like number that is shown alongside the, the culverin. Now, just because this number is good does not necessarily mean that the weapon is good as well. It just means it's a much higher rank. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure in every single slot here that you have the best weapon that you can. Now the same goes for armor. This is where you're going to equip your armor. This makes a massive difference. Like you can see if I swap down to like this armor here, just, just changing my armor to the weakest one immediately takes me back down to rank seven. Like it takes me just below rank eight. So like literally just boom, now I'm rank seven. Like, isn't that crazy? Like one simple armor. So this is how people are reaching high levels, like, you know, 10 and higher, quite simply by, you know, just having a bunch of these different things and making sure you have the right furniture that supports the build, that supports like, you know, the weapon types that you're using. Some of them make your culverins shoot faster. Some of them make your, you know, your mortars hit a larger radius. 
make sure you're using all different pieces here that actually benefit the style that you're playing so that you can get an increase on your damage because that's also quite important. Okay, so now that you understand how ship rank works, let me explain what I did to rank up as fast as I could. Now, I started this playthrough in the open beta and I probably played like maybe like five or six hours in the open beta, got to Brigand, which was pretty quick. And in the first two days of early access, you can see I made it all the way up to Kingpin, which actually acts as like a prestige. You can see here, you just need like about like 2000 points infamy to go from Kingpin, like one to two to three to four to five. I'm assuming this number just goes on infinitely. You can become Kingpin 9,909, I don't know, maybe. It just keeps going up. The cool thing about this is every time Kingpin levels go up from one to two, you do get a cool, you know, like cannon or something in your mail. So some of those cannons or weapons that I have right now are actually from, you know, getting Kingpin levels. So grinding infamy can unlock you those different cannons just by going to your mail. Alternatively, you can hunt down specific, you know, things that you need. For example, let me start out with this ship. At the beginning of the game, you're going to start out with the, the dough and you're going to end up with a, you know, a beater. Here, this shop, this ship over here, the rammer, you're going to end up with this one early on in the game, no doubt about it. The rank one, it's like the entry level thing. Now from here, you're going to want to upgrade to another ship as soon as you can. And the other ship that I'm going to recommend to you is actually a support class. It's like a, a healing type ship. And the reason why I say this is because it constantly heals its damage, you know, 0.5% and hell health by 0.5% every second. So every minute you're healing 30% of your, you know, your health, which is fantastic. But the thing you'll notice is that first off, you probably don't have the blueprint for this. Now you can always come to the ship right here and you'll see there's a button at the bottom right that says track blueprint, right? If I go ahead and I press F, it can actually track the blueprint. And this is going to do two things. First off, it's going to tell you where to find it on the map. Now I already have the blueprint for the Sentinel ship, but if I use one that I don't have the blueprint for, so if we look at the Defender ship over here that you can see I don't actually own the blueprint for, you'll have this for most of your ships that will be just be grayed out like this because you need the blueprint before you can even think of crafting it, as well as Infamy rank, which will be indicated when you hover over these. Like, for example, the Bombardier you can get at the Brigand um, Infamy, and then as you go up this list, you can unlock more rare ships. Now for the ships that are grayed out like this, you can see on the right hand side, it gives you a clue of where you can get it found in the Red Isle, purchasable from the Faro Warrior in the Sacred Tree. This is the same for every single one that is grayed out. It will tell you where you can get it from. Alternatively, you can actually make this super easy and press the track blueprint option at the bottom right. Boom. You'll see now it's added to the track thing. You can see it on the right hand side and now it even marks it on your map. So if I go ahead and open my map and I zoom out, You'll see here, okay, cool. It's gonna show on the map, it's gonna look like this, it's gonna have the yellow, you know, blueprint hovering over it. I know at this location is where we can get that, that, you know, that blueprint. So let me go ahead and sail there and show you what it looks like. So here we are arriving at the outpost now. All you gotta do is disembark there. And you'll see there's an NPC always near the landing point. On this side, it's on the right, but they're always very close to where your rowboat is. And you can go ahead and speak to them and go buy and sell and you will see that the blueprint is even marked on the thing over here. And you can see they also sell often other blueprints that you might need as well for different types of weapons. And you can go ahead and purchase this so that you're able to go ahead and craft it. Now you don't always have to go to the den or the, you know, the shipwright or the, you know, the carpenter or the blacksmith to find these things. You can actually just go open up your inventory, go to this option on the far right, this book here, the knowledge book. We're going to select the codex option over here and you'll see here you can actually search for everything. There's the ships, the deck weapons, you can even find the hell armors, the major furniture locations for the blueprints, the materials. You can track almost pretty much everything. You can track everything, right? But for more specifically, let's go for the ships and we're going to go Okay, so the ship that we want is the cutter ship. This is the ship that I recommend. You can see after you do have the blueprint, it will tell you what ingredients you do require to make this thing. And on the right hand side, it says bronze ingot, iroko plank, fine jute, and 1080 silver. If I go ahead and I track this, it actually makes a cool little nifty feature where it puts it on your screen at the top right and tells you how much you have in storage and, and in total. So you can see I already have all the resources needed. But for you who's still on the beater ship the, at the beginning of the game, you're probably not going to have all of these. And you might be wondering where on earth do you get those? Now, once you do have this tracked just like this, you can go ahead and open up your map and it will actually show you on the map the locations where you can find all those different things. So if I zoom in here, you can see here, this is a trade route where there is fine jute and also frankincense. 
What a trade route means is that there are ships that sail along this route that will often have fine jute on them. Alternatively, you can also go to locations like this settlement over here where you can both buy or plunder the place to get the resources. And those are the two ways you're often going to find the resources by sinking ships on trade routes that have the stuff or plundering a settlement that has the stuff. Now, when you see ships on the trade route, you can use your spyglass option at the bottom right. For me, it's R. And if you look at the ship, you can actually see their actual loot. It has three fine jute, and that's what we need. And it also has all the other stuff, right? So if I go ahead and I sink this one, we can go ahead and, you know, just take its stuff. So there it sinks and you can see we get the loot that it said when we use the spyglass on it and that's how you get the fine jute. You will have to just defeat some of these ships. Now when you find one of those settlements that you want to raid, you can also use the spyglass, aim at them and you can see exactly the loot that you would get if you finish all stages of the, you know, the plunder. You can see we get nine bronze ingots, four Iroko planks and a bunch of other stuff. Now, while you do have the option to use the plunder option, you can also buy the stuff with with silver. So you can interact with them. You can go buy and sell and you can actually buy the stuff with silver. You can see bronze ingots, Iroko planks. They do have limited stock. You can see they have six ingots, six Iroko planks, but it's going to be quite expensive for you to purchase, as you can tell. So oftentimes, if you can defeat them, rather go for the plunder option if it's much higher level then it might actually be better saving up the silver so that you can go ahead and, you know, work for it the hard way. Now, when you're plundering places, you'll both have the option to defeat towers. As you can see over here, the top left icon was a tower. And after you take out the towers, you will then be attacked by waves of ships that come in. And you'll see here there is a progress bar loading for loot at the top. And once it reaches the far right hand side, you will get all the loot. You'll see it like loads as a yellow chest in the sea. And this will give you all that loot that you saw on them just one bit at a time. You can see we've got one ingot, three clothes. And now we wait for the next attack that's going to come in. So just make sure you defeat all the ships and the enemies and you'll get all the loot. And once you have those resources, you can return to a shipwright on any of the dens and you can go ahead and craft new items and you'll be able to craft your ship. So once you do get the cutter ship over here, you can see it's a rank two, but you can push this to about four or five by upgrading your weapons, your armor, as well as your furniture all at the same time. So make sure you check the blacksmith, you go to craft new items, you check what cannon types that you want, make sure you are able to craft them by having the right amount of infamy. You'll see at the bottom it will say, oh, you need to be cutthroat or you need to be, you know, old kingpin or something like that. If it just says you do not own the required blueprint, it means that you can get it right now. You just have to go ahead and press the track blueprint option just like that and repeat the process of finding it on the map and going ahead and collecting the resources, bringing the resources back here to the blacksmith and crafting the cannons and then going to the dock to manage your ship and put them on your ship. And you're going to do the same thing with the furniture from the carpenter over here. And that is essentially how are you going to upgrade your ship faster than the progression system through the quests in the game. Now, after you reach the cutter ship, you actually want to increase and go to the Padawakang, the bombardier ship, as soon as possible. This ship is going to be a lot harder to get, but once you do get it, it's going to open up a huge world of difference. You're going to go from rank 5 or rank 4 on your cutter to rank 7 with the bombardier pretty much instantly. You should also know that these ships come with different speeds, different, you know, stamina, cargo, everything. You can see this bombardier has a trimming speed of 14,000, its speed is 11. You have the health of the ship over here and you can see all the information there. You can see the loadout potential. You can have five weapons, one on the bow, two on the broadsides, one on the stern, one on the auxiliary, and also the amount of furniture slots, one, two, three, four. Now, of course, to get this blueprint, you're going to have to press the track blueprint option by pressing F. As you can see, it tracks the blueprint. Now, I know for a fact you're actually going to get it from the Telok Panjara location, the den over here at the northeast. So if you make your way to this location, it's a very long sail, can be quite dangerous. Don't get into fights if you don't need to. Once you get to this location, you're actually going to go ahead and speak with the ship right there. You're going to go buy and sell and you will actually see if you scroll down, you can actually find all the different, you know, stuff that you need. Like for them on that side, you'll be buying the blueprint for the bombardier ship at, at the shipwright on that den. So remember, all of these shops generally sell blueprints that you have to use and get. Now, as always, you'll see that there is a crafting requirement list of items that you need. Like for this one, you're going to need 18 ironwood planks, 15 steel ingots, 15 fine rami, 4 shellac, and 4 crude saltpeter. 
And just like before, you'll see where the resource is by, you know, the different marks on the map. It will tell you where you can find them. Some of these might be higher level, so maybe wait for a higher level player to swoop in or just take cheesy shots, half plunder a place and then leave before it gets too hard. You will have to play super carefully. But if you play your cards right, you can get all these resources and you can upgrade to the next ship and, you know, skip a bunch of levels and become massively strong really quick. That's what I did. In my opinion, the best ship right now in the game is the Hellbreaker, the Brigantine class. This one you unlock at I think it was Cutthroat or the one before it you should see on your game what it says below here but the reason why this ship is so good is it's still the rank 5 just like the Bombardier there's no real difference in terms of like the ranking but the big thing about the Hellbreaker is that it's a DPS class it has a much better um, you know like a crew attack it uses the firearm muskets which for me is way better than the firebombs from the other one it has a massive ramming strength thing so when you ram enemy ships you end up doing a lot of damage by ramming them. And this works especially well because you have a high speed of 18. 18. Most of the other ships only go like 12 or 14. Your normal speed is 12. You can go 18 with this. Like you go so fast. Literally to travel this world, you're going to want this thing because of the speed that it can go. It does have less cargo than the Bombardier, but it's still more than enough and I still haven't filled it up to the point where I'm like, damn, I don't have enough cargo. It's still a lot. It comes with the option for five weapons, one on the bow, two on the broadside, one on the stern, one on auxiliary, and then it has five furniture slots, one major and four minor. And you can see it is quite expensive. This I did at rank seven on my Bombardier. Most of these resources, you're going to be fighting rank 10 ships to get. And I did this at rank seven. It took some time. It took a couple hours. But if you play your cards right and you track the blueprint, you'll be able to find all those resources, whether it's on a supply route going from one place to another, like the supply route over here. It has the Roselle cloth, has the magnetite ingots and you just sit there and you just destroy ships that come along this pathway that have those resources alternatively you can try your luck with trying to call for help and get higher level players to take out like you know ca capital settlements like this this one's a really high one that's level 13 i know there's a lower one over here that is level 10 and this is where you're going to get like the torsion spring and you know all the other things that you might need Remember, it is okay to sail away if you feel like you are losing the fight. As long as you're beating some of it at the beginning and you can get some of the rewards, you can always let it reset and then just, you know, keep poking at it just to get a few of those resources to upgrade your ship to that next level. Just don't forget to also upgrade your furniture and cannons along the way too, because cannons are going to make a huge difference to your ship rank as well as the furniture because you're going to want to be strong against these enemies. Some of them are going to be much higher rank than you and it will be tough and you will sink. But if you do it right and you focus and you pay attention, you can get really strong really easily, to be honest. I hope you guys found this video helpful and thank you so much for watching.